so much to play, so little time. Even the most alert gamer can sometimes let great games slip through the cracks. Here are two great game series that Morgan and I don't think you should miss. The Legacy of Kane series spans across four consoles and has been chugging along for nearly eight years now. Do you not feel with all your soul how we have become like gods? It all began with an under-the-radar Zelda clone called Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. It remembers that, does it? A nobleman named Kane is assassinated in the land of Nosgoth after being booted out of a bar. Things come with a night that no sane man would welcome. And so I left. In death, he wishes for nothing more than revenge. And the necromancer Mortanius obliges. Reborn as a vampire, Kane is not only immortal, but rather chatty. The heart of darkness restores vampiric unlight. This ancient vial bears with it a dark gift indeed. And eviscerate my human enemies, but increases my own capacity to summon. My mind was empty, save for one thought. He can't even shut up when he exacts revenge on his killers. There is no greater relief than that from vengeance, sated. My quest was over. Not quite, Kane. This seemingly innocuous beginning has mushroomed into one of the longest and most complex storylines in gaming history. The story has jumped across thousands of years in Nosgoth's history, introduced a second main character in the form of Raziel, and generally twisted the plot over onto itself so many times it even makes my head spin. Tumbling, burning with white hot fire. But everything actually does make sense in the end. The Kane games bear strong similarities to the Zelda series, albeit with an M-rated twist. While Blood Omen 2 is a bit of a weak link, the Legacy of Kane series is well worth playing if you dig on the adventure games. There are only two sides to your coin. Apparently so. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day, it lands on its edge. Speaking of the other side of the coin, my turn. I picked a series that has been criminally overlooked. Shenmue is Yu Suzuki's pet project that follows a Japanese youth on his quest to avenge his father's murder. A mysterious Chinese man named Lan Di shows up one day and offs Ryo's dad, and Ryo swears to find him and, of course, make him pay. No! Shenmu is part detective adventure. I found him in Huang's room. And? I'm going to listen for clues. All of them? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Part fighting game. <laughs> Damn! The first game takes place in a small Japanese town, while the second takes Ryo to more exotic locales in China, mainly Hong Kong. Along the way, Ryo uncovers family secrets that will likely reveal more than he wants to know about his father's true past. Wow. Ryo's persistence is admirable. Nothing stands in the way of his quest, except collecting capsule toys. A capsule toy, five dollars each. I'll try it. And his well-known preoccupation with seamen. Do you know any places where sailors like to hang out around here? You say sailors, but you don't mean just any sailor, do you? When he sets his mind to something, though, he'll ask anyone who crosses his path about it. Here in Hong Kong, you can easily get run over. Where's Wan's eye? Huh? Which way is it to Wan's eye? Want to go together? Which way is it to Wan's eye? Yeah, Ryo can be dumb sometimes, but it's a cute kind of dumb. Either you're fearless or plain stupid. Did you say something? People seem to love or hate this game, but I can't get enough of Ryo Hazuki's adventures in Vengeance. You can find the original in the Dreamcast and the sequel on the Xbox for super cheap, since they didn't exactly hit the bestseller list. Shut up.